Hello everyone. I'm Tina Liddy and I've, uh, I'm a teacher here sometimes at the Lost Goddess Library. I'm here on a beautiful sunny afternoon um, heading into the heart of the summer and I am going to be doing a watercolor uh, loose floral class for you today. Um, it'll probably be about an hour long. I have taught this class here at the library several times in the evenings and we've always had a lot of fun. Um, it's a little different recording it and not being able to answer questions, but I'll do my best. Um, and one, a couple of things that you, you might want to have on hand, I need to talk about supplies, which would be of course paper to paint on and some brushes. Uh, water and some watercolors and a lot of times people are held back from being creative because they think that they don't have the proper tools they don't have good enough paper or good enough paints um, but that really isn't true what you need to do is just get started and just experiment and practice and have fun and the main thing is have fun because that's what it's all about and, and if you let go of the idea of being perfect, then you can be good. And, that, and that's a quote by John Steinbeck. Um, now that we don't have to be perfect, we can be good. And the most important thing is have fun with it and be creative and, and don't be so hard on yourself. We, would, we always tell other people how good their artwork is or whatever it is they're doing and then we tell ourselves that we aren't very good at anything and it's just not a good habit it's much better to be kind to ourselves just like we would be to someone else um, so um, to start with the the supplies today I'm going to be using this paper it's by Canson watercolor paper and it is as you see cold press and it is 140 pounds, which is a really nice weight. This is by no means the best paper, but it's very good and it's great for practicing. A lot of you may not have watercolor paper at home. Um, you may have cheaper brands. That's okay to start learning. I think that even the dollar store carries watercolor paper and I don't think I've tried it, but I have tried their drawing paper. This is drawing paper from the dollar store and it is, it's just heavyweight drawing paper. You would have to be careful adding water because as you see it's good for dry media but maybe not for so much for water. But if that's all you have then experiment with that. Try it because it might work out just fine. If you don't have anything but copy paper, try it. This is copy paper from the dollar store one dollar for 75 sheets and I just did a, a drawing lesson where I was using pencil but then inking it and the ink does not bleed through it's great paper for drawing and again especially for practicing so don't let your lack of good quality art paper or pens or paints hold you back from creating um, you'll find that you can make do with a lot of things and maybe you'll make some adjustments so in, in our lesson today we're not going to be drawing our design first, although that is perfectly okay if you feel more comfortable drawing with pencil and then coloring in with the paint. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm going to be teaching a loose floral class, which means we're suggesting the flower petals and the leaves, and we're not worrying about the actual detail of, of every vein and petal and stamen and that kind of thing. That was a, kind of a hard thing for me to do because I am more detail oriented and I like to draw all the little details and so when I started learning how to do loose floral watercolors it was hard not to make hard edges and put more detail in and I still struggle with that. I'm still practicing but it's really fun and it's nice to let go of some of that detail and, and have fun with the color and the shape of things and not worry about the rest and especially if your if your materials aren't the best then you can say I'm doing this on purpose and <laughs> that's always a good thing and if you ever heard of, of Bob Ross that was kind of his mantra that if something went wrong it would happy accident and you can build your own little world and fantasy is a good thing I love flowers because 
they're always a little bit different and they're colorful and organic things flowers and trees and everything it's very forgiving and uh, and it's also brings you peace when you're doing this kind of thing um, the brushes I'm going to be using are Princeton but they could be any brand they're soft and they're they're, they have a little snap to them. They're a little bit flexible. They're called round brushes. They have a little bit of a point. So I can actually use a big brush, and if I press hard, I get a big area, but if I just barely touch it, I can get very small lines. I could do this whole design with this bigger brush by just touching it lightly or touching it harder to make a bigger area. Um, any brand will do. I think this brand comes from Michaels. This is fine. And it's just a round brush. This is a size 6. This is a size 8. The little one's a size 4. Whatever you have will work. And the brushes that come in the watercolor sets often are not very good. And if they're stiff, they're not going to work very well for watercolor. So you don't want to use the worst brushes that you have you'll have but you can do it if that's all you have so that's what anyway that's what I'm using and I'll use the Canson watercolor paper but use what you have um, the paint that I'm going to use today is from this tiny little set this is what we used when I taught the watercolor class here a couple of times um, and the library was kind enough to order this for me it's a student grade of watercolor and it's very tiny it almost looks like a travel set so we'll be able to do just what we need with this little paint set this is a, a nice set as you can tell I have not used it's also a travel set and it's by Grumbacher so it is good paint but I still haven't used it or it could be Winston and Newton that's another good one and oh, and here's the little brush that came out of this little set perfectly good Many of you may have praying colors. This is often seen in the schools. These are fine. These work great. So um, any of these will work. Just use what you have. If you don't have watercolors, I believe you can take, well, I know you can take any kind of acrylic paint and put, at, put it out on a, on a palette. Maybe you have a paper plate or something. Squeeze just a little bit out add some water to it, thin it, and it'll work like watercolor. Um, remember if you have thin paper, use don't use as much water because it will probably buckle and and but that's that's just the way it is. But hopefully you have some stiffer paper, maybe cardstock. Most people have some cardstock. That might work better. Experiment, experiment. That's what we want to do. Um, I I'm not going to take the time to do these lessons, but I wanted to show you. Um, so as you can see, if you add water to the paint, it lightens it. It makes it more transparent. So the, if you wanted a dark blue or a light blue, you add more water. Now sometimes, as you can see, a lot of colors are, at, are available, but you mainly mix your own. You mix colors together. So this sheet was, was an experiment in what the colors look like when you add water. And this sheet was an experiment of what happens when you add two different colors. What color will you get? What kind of purple will you get with this blue and this pink? What color green will you get with this green and this blue? But this green and this blue makes a different color this green and this blue makes a different color so that was just having fun with the paints and it's I always recommend when you have your paints experiment and see what you come up with because that's how you're going to get the colors that you want for your painting and whether they're realistic colors or flamboyant fun colors it doesn't matter it's it's good to know what's going to happen before you put it on the paper but I also believe it's really fun to experiment on the paper instead of using a palette you can go ahead and use your paper. Mix your colors on your paper and see what happens. The only thing you want to be careful of is not to mix too many colors together. You'll get brown, and that may not be the color you want. And certain colors like green and red will make brown. So um, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more as we're going. Um, another thing that I should mention is a good thing to do if you have your watercolors out is to put water in the 
the paint so that they can start getting soft and while I finish showing you what we're going to do. I have two jars of water here and that's because I'm going to use the bigger one for washing my brush the first time and if it gets too dirty I have another one that'll be clean. Sometimes if you're doing big paintings and you have a lot of paint on your brush when you wash it, it makes all this water colorful and as you add more colors you end up with brown water and then you can't get pure colors because you can't really clean your brush. So many times the artists will, when they're done with a the color, they'll wash it in the, in the bigger jar that might be getting dirty and then wash it again in the cleaner jar so that they always have a clean brush to start with. But what, what they'll say, this is a good thing, is put a, some water in each of the colors that you think you might be using it doesn't matter how much, just put the water in your colors and that will condition the paint. These are all dry watercolors, so they need the water in order to get soft so you can use them. Some people have tubes of watercolor, which I have too, but um, I really like the portability of the dry paints. It's just, it's just easy and fun. So. Um, so anyway, go and put the water in. If you have two paints, you don't have to get it wet first, but you still will want to add water to it in order to make it more transparent. So, and as you can see, I put, I don't know, one of these colors in the brown and made it green. So I'm going to use my, sorry for my hand reaching across. Uh, the setup at the library is wonderful, but I have the computer to my right and I don't want the water anywhere near it, so I'm going to have to reach across in order to clean my brushes. Um, so anyway, so quickly, I think I will take my picture out of here so that we can use the full screen for what we're going to be doing. And then um, basically I'm going to show you some ideas, that um, things that I've uh, presented in the other classes so that and normally we would have them all around the room or on the table with you so that you could look at lots of different ideas and take one and use it. Normally uh, I would teach you how to paint a whole bunch of different and leaves and let you paint whatever you want to do, but today I'm going to choose one of the designs and paint that with you. So I will be seeing you at the end of the video and it'll be about an hour long. Also if you are wondering, like you could always pause the video and practice something. You can always fast forward or go back and watch something again. I don't know if I'll move too fast or too slow for you, but you you can control the speed. This will be this class I believe is going to be aired around three o'clock in the afternoon, one of the days next week, but they will it will be available on their Facebook site for Las Gatas Library for a while, so you can watch it as many times as you want. And then I hope you enjoy it and have fun. So this was, a, this was actually a, a similar exercise to this exercise, but I thought I would make it with flowers instead. And so I have different colors of green and, and, and different colors of blue, the blue with this intense and then with more water. That's what these are. So that was a fun way to experiment with the different colors. And this was a, a page of experimenting with different flower shapes and how to make them. And instead of having this lesson be the, just the shapes, I'm going to incorporate them into a floral wreath. So one way that you might want to do that is to take something like a paper plate or I mean a bowl and trace around it and then you can get a wreath. You could do different sizes or you can freehand a wreath. Um, you don't have to paint a wreath if you don't want to. You can paint. You can paint a bouquet of flowers. You could do a garden if you wanted. I'm basically going to be talking about how to do the flowers and the leaves. So this one was based on a bowl, just about this size. So I'm just going to go through and show you some different ideas that you can be thinking about, and you may want to use some of these ideas later so you can rewind to this point. We're at 14 minutes, so you can rewind to this part and then you can see some of these ideas that maybe aren't, um, aren't the ones that I'm teaching. But they're, they're all using basically the same idea. This again was the bowl. 
a lot of times you paint it, it'll be very transparent. You let it dry a little bit and then you come back and paint over it again and you'll get darker colors or you'll get overlapping. So that's fun. None of these are using a lot of water. Uh, there's a wet technique where you get the whole paper wet with water and then when you add the colors they blend and bleed and you're not sure where they're going to go. This is not, this is painted wet on dry paper. Um, the birds were more of a challenge. I looked at a greeting card to get that idea, but the, the branches and the leaves were pretty easy and often there was a lot of water so when it dries you, it's very pale. It's a nice look. This was all looking at a greeting card and trying to do the different flower shapes and leaves and, and uh, so the, again there's lots of ideas here. I'm going to be doing something like this one today. My artwork never comes out the same twice in a row so um, don't feel like you have to copy this. I don't think I can copy it. <laughs> I think it would come out different but um, I thought it was fun because it had some nice shapes and light nice colors. This one is just if you're a detail person and you want to do more delicate things you can you can do that. Uh, this was a pretty cute one too with the strawberries. So maybe we'll add strawberries in the other one. So like I said, it's fun. You can do what, what you want. This was a sketch I had done, but I decided not to use it. But if you like to draw first, you might want to draw something like this. and Or even a sketchier drawing where you might roughly do your oval, which is probably a good idea anyway. But then you might just want to put where you want certain accents. You, you might want to put some detail but not all the detail. And then here I have a page that I just started um, and I was experimenting. So I'm going to use this page to test my paints, see if they're ready to go. Um, like I said, I'm not going to worry too much about whether or not it's perfect. I just want to play and have fun. So. This is the brush that came in the paint set, Camellia, Camellia, and I think these paints are probably ready, um, but they're not necessarily wet enough, so I may take a little bit of paint. I'm not even going to clean my palette. If you had a new palette, of course, I have these colors here, but I'm just going to pick a spot, and as you can see, that's very intense. So if I wanted to do a painting, here and this was a little rose I would I could do like a little C and I could do another C and I could do another C and you see I'm running out of colors maybe I'll put a little dot maybe I'll do another C like that and I'll just keep going out and as I paint I'm getting less paint and more water and I'm just suggesting and I'm trying to kind of overlap where these blend and I'm just I'm just making it up as I go. Now I'm going to get a little bit of water and I'm going to put it back in my paint so that I have a lighter color. Now some people will they'll wash it off and that is the one thing that I forgot to bring with me today is paper towels or something to dry my brushes. So I'm probably going to use the same paper. It'll probably become a, my scratch paper but where I can wipe it off. But while this paint is still a little bit wet, I can kind of come in and I can add some water and then I can make these blend and that will make a little rose for me. But remember it's loose. We're suggesting a rose. We're not, it doesn't have to really look like a rose. It could be a camellia. It could be a peony. It can be a chrysanthemum. It can be anything that you want it to be. But it's just fun. I'm just making little sea strokes. And I've got more and more water. And so now it's pale. And uh, so now I'm suggesting that there are petals in the background. Now I'll wash my brush and I'll, and I'll get a little bit of green. And as you can see, we, we have a nice dark green, but it's going to be very intense and not very realistic. We have this light green also very intense and not very realistic and then a yellow. If I don't want it to be artificially green maybe I will take 
Um, I'm not even going to worry about my brush. I'll take this ochre color, but I could do the yellow. I'll take this ochre color, mix it in with it. It should tone it down a little bit. If that is still too yellow, maybe I'll put a little brown in it. And that will, well, that made it pretty brown. But maybe that's okay. Um, so it's probably going to be pretty intense. I'm going to get a little bit more water. I'm going to dab it. And because this is my scratch paper now, I'll just make sure that it's not too wet. And then I can, maybe I'll make a, a big leaf here. And I'll do just a simple leaf shape, but maybe I'll, I'll do it like this so that I end up with the dark color towards the middle and that will be my, my little stem in the middle. And sometimes, you know, you might want this to be serrated. So then you can just come and you can kind of make it a little bit edgy like that, like little, little points. Now, this is very sketchy. It's very simple. It will dry lighter, so keep that in mind. But this ended up, this muddy color that I wasn't sure was going to be any good ended up being a real pretty color. As it dries, you can go back and put some veins, but you do have to be careful not to paint over it too much or it might ruin your paper. It, sometimes the color ends up really muddy. So it's really hard not to keep reworking it and keep painting over, but that's one of the things you want to try and do, is not to keep going over it too many times. So that was really fun. Now I'm going to dip my brush in the water, but not the paint again, and just see what happens if I do another one. You can see there's a lot of water there, so I'll spread it out and just kind of suggest a leaf. I'm just suggesting a leaf very little detail and that used to be really hard for me to do because I wanted to draw or paint all the detail but I'm finding it so much fun to not do that maybe I'll just do a little dabbing there and that'll make that stem and I left some white there that's what it was so I'm just gonna leave it see what happens it's not gonna be wrong if you really don't like it after it dries you can come touch it up and it's just fun to play with and see what, what you're going to get. Okay, so there's, there's an idea. And then another flower that we will use a lot, maybe I'll take this orange and it's going to be very bright. I'm just going to mix it. I already have some other colors here, but again, I might take a dab of this little brown so that it's not quite so orange. And this may or may not have a lot of paint. I'm going to do, um, I think I'll do a simple open flower like this. And it might end up coming out more like this. So as you can see, these two next to each other, a lot of paint and not a lot of water, much more water, not a lot of paint. Now that doesn't mean that my brush is going to be loaded with water, it means it's not going to have as much paint in it. So it's we're, we'll just start with a dot and we're going to do a, four petals on this particular flower. One's going to go up this way, one's going to go this way, one will go this way, and one will go this way. Let me just move this down a little bit so you can see a little closer. And so it's going to kind of come out like this shape and then we can fill it in. And again, I'm not going to worry too much about where these dark, these dark uh, dots are, although I might want to pull them into the center of the flower. And then this one, you know, is going the other way. And they're just kind of the same size and it's already lighter because I didn't get more paint but I'm just going to pull that dark into the middle. But now I think I need more paint, so I'll get a little bit more from the palette because I already have it there. And it might be dry, a little dry, so I'll add a little bit more water to it. And we'll just see. I won't know until I paint whether it's got enough paint on it. We'll go up this way and make, these are kind of like triangles. And then make an, one more triangle. I'm not really touching the edge there so that the white makes a border. 
as you see, I'm not I'm not outlining anything. I don't have hard edges necessarily, um, and I like it where it has more water. This one isn't as interesting to me because it's almost the same color. So I'll see if I can make some of the paint move. Okay, so there's a simple four petal flower. When it's dry, I can come back with something else and put it in the middle. Now, just for fun, let's do yellow. So I have some yellow. I have a little bit of space here where I just have yellow. It's going to get some orange in it. It might get some green in it. That's okay. And I'm going to do a flower more like this, which is a daisy. And I'm going to start on the outside. So let's see, so we would maybe have a center. It's probably going to have a big center. And that's okay. We'll just go ahead and do this. I might come back with orange and make it a different color. As a matter of fact, let's do that while we have wet paint. We already have this orange. Let's see what happens if we put some dots in it. So I put some dots with the orange and it looks kind of like that. And then I'll go back and just get mostly the yellow, but I don't care if there's a little bit of orange in it. And I'm going to pull a petal down. I'm going to make, I'm going to pull it down like that. So you can make it be round, rounded here. Or you could make it be pointed. It could be pointed here and it could be pointed at the end. You might want a petal like that. But we'll just make it be like a daisy. Now, as you see, they don't all have to be the same length. And they don't have to all be the same color. They can be dark and light. That one, if there's a white streak, that's okay because sometimes that be, that looks like a highlight. And I do not have a lot of water because you may have paper that can't take a lot of water. I have some water. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna get a little bit more paint here. And I'm just going to keep making these shapes And maybe we could have one that's kind of bent, like that. Because when they're bent, that kind of shows that they're curving. And they're all attached to this middle part right here. And, and, and as you see, this dried fast. And that is another thing you'll find with, with a paper that isn't as good. It dries, the paint and the paper is not super high quality, so it dries faster. But that doesn't mean that you can't do interesting things with it. It means you paint a little differently than you do with the finest quality. And I don't have the finest quality. So I don't, that's why I don't think you need to. And if, if, if you've got practice and you know what you're doing, you, you can definitely make beautiful artwork with any, any supplies. So I did get a little bit more yellow. And I'm making these curved, and I'm going to shorten them to make them look like they're kind of going behind. And then I'll just not paint the whole thing. You could easily just paint petals going all the way out, but because I made these short and round, now it looks like the flower is tipping away from us. That paint has dried a little bit. I'm going to take some of this orange and put some more in the center. And Maybe just to, at where each petal comes, it might bleed into those petals if they're still wet. It's kind of fun. Gives it some texture. It will only keep bleeding in if your paint is still wet. So if you want it, to, if you wanted to touch it up and have it go into the paint, you need to do it while it's still wet. So there is a daisy shape. I know it looks a little strange because the light is shining. Oops, well, let's see what happens. There's a little accident. <laughs> the orange is just going right along the petal, and I, li I like it. Kind of fun. All right, so maybe I should make it do this one too so you know that there's a petal arching up there. Okay, and then this one could be on a, on a stalk with, with green leaves, not unlike this, but maybe a darker green. But we're not going to do that because we're doing a wreath, and so we don't need a full stem. But that might be, a, you might have a stem that 
comes around a little bit to help create a wreath. Um, and then maybe one more, well, two more quick ones. I'll do this little hot pink, and we can do a flower that um, is, again, you have a center point, but these petals can, you can have a whole bunch of them, and just have fun with it. It could be an imaginary flower or it could be a real flower. And we want all these petals to go to the middle. And you'll see some will be lighter than others and those are the ones in the background. And the ones that are closest to the front will have the most color most likely. But if, you're, if you have a um, so I'm going to just add some of the extra little petals. So this is almost like a aster, an aster. And I could put a different color for the center. And it's still wet, so it might bleed a little bit, and that would be kind of fun. Maybe if I put a little more water on it, it will. See where it goes. So that's just sort of an imaginary flower, but an easy one to do. And, um, I'm going to wash my brush and take a little bit of blue. And I do have kind of a lot of water on it. There's a little patch where I can put some blue. I don't want too much water. Um, and I, I have, oops, I have three blues to choose from here. It doesn't matter which ones, you can mix them together. But maybe we want a flower that has like a lupin where you have lots of, lots of different petals that are all going to go together. This is a, a technique that you could use for lavender. And you see it's, it's getting lighter as I go because I have less paint and more water. Maybe I will come back in with the purple and, and put some purple in those. You want, you, if you want to mix it like that, you want to put the purple in while the blue is still wet. But and this is where I'm just, I'm mixing this on, the, on my painting. I'm not mixing it on my palette. And if I don't want that to stay that purple, I'll go back in and put a little bit of blue in with the purple. And then, then I, you know, can go back and get my green and make a stem. And this can be part of the wreath as well because you could make it curved. And the other flowers there was so here's how about a little red one I don't think it can get much simpler than this if we have we'll just make it be the center could be different but if you just put dots around and these are the petals these are good filler flowers you can have lots of them and you can put them all around maybe they only have five petals two three four five and then I'll wash my brush a little bit. And now I have to be careful because if, if it touches that, it's gonna, it's gonna blend in. But maybe I want it to. Maybe I'll put that yellow on top of that one and see what happens. But see how they all connected? Maybe you want that look, maybe you don't. Um, there was a sort of a tulip kind of flower that was make a U shape. Oh, sorry, I'm off the camera. I, I, I get interested in what I'm doing and I forget to look. So then we have a U and, and there might be a couple of petals that go up like that. This is sort of like a tulip or, or a, I have to think of some other flowers that are like that. I want to say fritillary, but I don't know if that's true. Okay, so that would be fun. I could go back. I didn't even wash my brush. I just grabbed some green and I make this little part on the, on the I think it's called a calyx, and then you can bring your stem down. So those are some different shapes. I'm just going to jump into the wreath and you'll see that a lot of these leaf shapes are actually, these are the same shapes that we've used for the flowers, can now become leaves. So I'm going to, uh, I'll wash my brush. I, like I said, I forgot to get a paper towel to, to blot my brush on and sometimes that's necessary because you want to 
not have too much water. So I'm going to keep this piece of paper handy so if I need to um, get the excess water off, I can do it on the paper. So you just have to be creative and come up with something. So we're now at the halfway mark. It's 35 minutes. Um, if in the future, if you just want to jump to this part, that's where we're starting our painting. This is basically the idea that I'm using and it's just simple flowers and shapes that go around and make a wreath. So occasionally I may even show you a different one so you can put a different element if you want to. I may show this one once in a while because it's fun and it has the strawberries. And I may show this one once in a while but I suspect that the one I paint is going to have many of those elements. So let's see what we come up with. So one, um, as far as drawing, you might want to use a mechanical pencil because it's got such a fine lead. It leaves just a tiny bit of pencil and if you draw very lightly, it may not show through at all. But I'm going to draw an oval. See, I'm going to move my camera up a little bit. So we can see a little better. Um, I really have to give kudos to the library. They invested in all yeah. kinds of recording equipment so that we can continue these programs for all of you even though you can't come into the library to do them. I just think this is amazing. And I have got all kinds of lights around me and everything and they do story time here. It's so much fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna sketch an oval. If you're more comfortable and you wanna trace, something like a bowl. You can do that. It'll, you'll obviously end up with a circle. You could even use it just for the, you could use, you could do it. Well, let's try it. I'm, I'll, I'll use it for the bottom and for the top. And I can see that I didn't do it in the middle of the paper, but that's okay. So I just did the top. And actually, on second thought, when I look at that, I realize I'm going to be too close to the edge of the paper. And that is, that's going to make um, it's hard to do my flowers. So I'm going to take a white plastic eraser. It happens to be in a holder. Um, this is one of my favorite things to use. It's white plastic. And lots of different companies make these. This happens to be Pentel. And the little erasers for the pencil are wonderful. And they don't, they don't hurt your paper. They um, don't leave residue. They don't leave color unless like this one is a little dirty. So I think I'll, I'll try rubbing it on the tabletop to see if I can clean it or on my blue jeans. That's usually how I clean it. I rub the eraser on my blue jeans and there we go, it's nice and clean. So I'm gonna erase this because it's too close to the top of my paper and I don't want it to, I wanna be able to paint my flowers. So I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. This one's okay, it's over, it's not centered, but remember, we're not trying to be perfect. We're just getting an idea of what we want to do. So if I want to use the bowl, which I don't really want to, but I'm showing for you, or maybe the top to something, this it just helps you kind of get that arch. But I, I like to just kind of sketch. So I'm just kind of kind of down the sides of the paper and like this. It, it doesn't have to be set in stone, it's just a guideline for you. Like I said, I'm not going to draw the flowers, but if you are more comfortable, maybe you want to have a kind of a, a bigger flower here. Maybe you want to have a bigger flower here, and maybe you want to have a bigger flower here. There's there's something, you know, you may have a, a clumping down here. You might want to put a, a ribbon, a bow or something. It's all, always a good idea to, to work in threes or if you're dividing your paper, do it into thirds instead of in half. So it's more interesting. And odd numbers are usually more interesting than even numbers. So I'm going to just start painting. And maybe I'll do my middle size brush. Well, I think I'm going to do my big brush. The big one is the eight. Maybe you have a brush about that size. If you don't, you can use this. This is a four. The one that came with this little kit doesn't have a number on it, but it might be a four. Sometimes when they get wet, they look a little different. 
you know, maybe you're more likely to have a small one. I'll use the small one also. So my paints are all wet. Um, if they start to dry out, just add another drop of water. Um, I think I'll start with, I'm just putting the water on these right now. I think I'll start with a few branches of green to give me an idea of, of where that, that border is. And because I have so much green on my palette, I'm just gonna use some of it up. And so I'm going to maybe make an arch here and I think I will use that um, that little shape that we use for the daisy and make some leaves. I happen to be pulling these down so it's easy to make a point and then I can push a little bit more on the brush and it makes it fatter and I like how it's getting lighter as I go. So I'm starting light with the the brush barely, barely touching and then I can push down and it, it spreads out and then it makes um, the bowl of the you know the wider part of the leaf. Okay so that was pretty cool and I like how it starts out dark and gets lighter. So I'm going to get more paint. I'm going to turn my paper. It's always okay to turn your paper and I'm going to start down here again and I'm going to do I'm going to have them opposing. You could stagger them some plants stagger and some plants meet up. I'm going to just have it meet up. And I'm going to leave that white because I think it looks like a highlight. And then I'm going to, remember it's kind of pointed, and then you touch lightly and then push down to get the bowl. Touch lightly and then push down and you, you get the rounded part. And it's okay, I, I don't know if I want the dots or not, but when it dries it looks so different, but I think I'll pull that into it just a little bit. You can always come back later and touch it up. And then this can actually go back into the wreath. It doesn't have to make a perfect circle. We'll probably put a flower over it. And I want to continue this color in a few other places, but maybe this one, I'll do this one, but it's also going to be pointing up. I could choose to have them all go the same direction so they continue the circle, or they can be more random. So maybe this one will go up like this, and maybe it'll come out from the circle just a little bit, because I don't want it to be a perfect circle. And so I'll start at the bottom again, I'll touch, and then push, and then lift again. I'll move this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I may have to turn my paper a little. So I'm going to touch lightly, push down and it makes it wider and then lighter again. Light, push down, pull. Light, push down, pull. Now maybe those are too pale, I don't know. I think they're going to be fine. If Sometimes when they're pale, they just look like they're in the background. But maybe I don't want that dot, so I'll pull it. So start here. I think I probably need to get a little bit more green. But remember, I mixed some brown into it so it wouldn't be quite so bright. But because I ran out of that and had to mix it again, I probably can never get the same color again. So just keep that in mind. Look how bright that is. Okay, I'll take a little bit more of this, this kind of brown-orange color and mix it in. Because that is so much brighter green. This will probably be too brown, but that's okay. And this is what happens if you have a lot of pigment and not a lot of water. But that's okay because it gives variety to it. It looks like it has a shadow on it. And again, if, if you want, you can either add a little bit more water to it, let it blend, maybe go up into those other leaves a little bit. This is called loose because 
we're trying not to be quite so detailed and we're trying to let the paint kind of have fun and see what happens to it. And that looks really dark, but I think it will lighten as it dries. So we'll just see what that happens. So now I have this color in two places. I think maybe down here at the bottom would be good. And also I think I will have it going up. So I have a lot of, a lot of paint here. I'm going to get a little bit more water and so it's not so intense. And I'll start here. So I'm going to touch lightly and then push. Touch lightly and push down and then lift. Touch lightly, push down and lift, touch lightly, push down and lift, and then the leader one. Then I'm going to get more paint, and because this is going to be on the outside, I'm going to let it be a little more intense. I'll start at the bottom, and I'm going to turn the paper again so that it's a little easier for me to get this angle. So touch and pull, touch and pull. So maybe that's a little too pale. I'll get a little bit more paint. So I think I need to mix up a little bit more paint. But I know that green is really bright, so I'll take a little bit of this orange color. Not too much because it makes it too brown. And that is very intense. I don't know if you can see that, but by the time I, I get a little bit more water, maybe let the excess water stay in there, it won't be quite so um, dark. But I wanted this side to be a little darker because it's down at the bottom of the plant and the bottom of the wreath. So I want it to have a little bit more weight. Okay. So as you can see, I mean, I don't like this edge here. I think I'll just touch it up with a little water. I think it's a little bit too harsh. So I'll let those blend a little bit. And I'm just kind of pulling and... Okay, so, and I think these are kind of fun. I think maybe I better not touch it. It's always hard to know when you've done enough and it's time to stop. <laughs> So, uh, if I do this, I'm, is it going to be a mistake or not? You you don't know. All right. So we've got some we've got some of our wreaths started now, and I won't do threes on everything. But um, so here here's kind of what we're, we've done. We've gotten a few of these kinds of green leaves in. I've got a few of them, but we're going to do some other ones. Maybe it would be fun to do one of those roses here. So I really had fun with this kind of pink rose um, or whatever, whatever flower you want to call it. I thought that was kind of fun. I could do that. Um, that's a kind of a brilliant rose or purple. Um, Okay, so I will get this purple with some water, and I'm going to put it over here. And then I'm also going to do pink. So I'm going to be mixing these two colors together. I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen a rose this color. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but it's my picture, and who cares? So I'll just do a little bit of a center, and then I'm going to start making C strokes. Just do a a couple around the middle. Now we're going to overlap those, kind of like when you lay bricks. And this is by no means scientific. So see how I start, and I and then if, again, if like the leaves we just did, push hard and then lift off, it kind of makes it fatter. Just like we did these leaves, we start light and then we push and then we pull. We start light, we push, and then we pull. Uh, I think maybe it's time for some more paint. So I kind of did the dark color on the inside and maybe a little darker on the inside and lighter on the outside. 
I do know that they kind of spiral around and so we're at the point now where we're probably going to start using more water because I, I'm, I want it to get more pale so I'm going to start getting more water and just kind of going around randomly doing these C's. And now I think I'm just going to get water and I'm just going to go over it so there's not so much white showing and just let the paint do what it wants to do. So I'm just filling in it with water. It's just water. I'm still doing C strokes, but you know, and this paint has started to dry, so it, it'll still have its definition, but it'll put some color in the middle. I'm only using water, I'm not using any paint now. So any paint that you see is just coming about from touching the other paint. So I'm gonna make those petals look a little bit rounder, but I like the paleness of these outside ones. So I'm not getting any paint except what's coming up from the paint that's already there. I'm only dipping in the water now. You can make a C and kind of fill in there if you want. And that's probably big enough for that flower. So there's the whole wreath. So that'll be a big accent. So maybe a cup, uh, maybe a spray of something here. So it's, sometimes it's good to have the weight near the bottom and then be lighter at the top, but sometimes people like to have the weight at the top. I wonder what would happen if I turned it around. It's just a different feeling. A lot of times people will say, hold your picture up in front of a mirror because looking at everything in reverse can make it look really different. Obviously, looking at it upside down can make it look really different. But um, in a mirror, it will change how it looks. Um, so maybe another big flower here, maybe the yellow daisy type flower would be nice there. So um, I know that there's different kinds of cone flowers. So I think I'll start with the center and I'll make it be this, this orange color, but it's not, it's not a bright orange. Here's your orange, your red and your orange and your ochre. This is a light brown. I may mix it with some yellow so it's not quite so intense and I'm gonna put it on the palette over here with my oranges. And I need a lot more water. And I'm going to make Remember how we did this flower that looked like this? I'm going to I'm going to make this be like a cone. I think that looks pretty good. I'm glad that I did that. So, I'm going to do that same flower here. I'm going to do the cone. It's kind of be well, let's let's be oops, sorry. Let's just kind of do this and we'll come back and make it dark later. But we'll make it be kind of a cone-shaped flower. There is a cone flower, and a lot of times they're this purple color. But this is going to be a yellow one. Now I cleaned my brush, and I'm getting the yellow, and I'm going to put it where I was mixing yellow before. But if I get some orange or some brown, maybe this a little bit of the same brown, will make it not be quite so bright yellow but I can come back and do that. So I'm going to do the same thing where I touch it and then I pull it and then I lift. And I'm gonna let this one be kind of pointy on the end because it's easier. And I see I'm already at the 55 minute cutoff. I, I, I wanted this to be done in about an hour. So we're gonna start painting a lot faster. So basically I'm using the yellow, but I just touched it in this brown. It's loaded with yellow but touched in brown and then it makes a nice variation. Now, so I'm picking up the yellow, then I'm just putting the tip of my brush in the brown so that it's right there and then I pull and I lift. And I do want these to be curved because 
it's going to be kind of looking up. Just touch and pull and lift. And I see I have an, a brush here. So one thing that does happen sometimes when you are using less expensive products is the bristles fall out. But you just, I think I can get the hair out. If not, I'll get it later. So, we'll keep going. Touch and pull. Touch and pull. And now remember, these aren't all going to be, they're not going to be complete strokes. So, I'm, I'm getting more yellow. Um, and I'm taking some of this orange because I don't want it to be quite so bright. So now we're just doing some shortened ones. We're going to kind of come out back to our C stroke again and another C stroke, but really short because we aren't going to see all the petals, uh, the whole petal, because this is going around in the back now. So we have just part of them. And don't worry if your pencil shows through if you did any drawing. Let's see, I better do this one because I want that to be on top. All right. Now we'll do some on the other side. So I take the yellow, touch it in the that kind of brown, light brown, and then I touch and I pull out. I think I might need a little bit more paint. Touch, to, I got some more yellow. Just a touch of the brown. And pull. Yellow, a touch of the brown, and pull. Now I have to just do part of them because we aren't going to see the whole petal. So this is just going to be that part of the petal. That way it looks like it's going around and in its... Okay, so I don't really like if it has a harsh line, so I will go over it a little bit. I don't know why it's doing that, if, but it's puddling. I'm not going to worry about the spaces that are showing there. This is dried enough where I can come back and get my brown again and I can make dots on it. And maybe I'll even, let's see if this dark brown, I'll just do a couple touches of the, of the darker brown, see what happens. It would be kind of fun, the darkest brown of all gives it some real definition, but I'm just going to do it at the bottom so that it looks like it's shaded. And I'll let's see, I better I'll put that down because I don't want to I want to get a little bit of the lighter for this part right here. So that's kind of a fun way to make a daisy. <coughs> All right, so now we have one more big flower over here. Maybe we'll do, uh, what do you think? Maybe we'll do red and orange. And I'm going to mix the red down here in this corner. I could have mixed it with the pink because red and pink is really fun. So I'm going to do the red, but I'm also going to let a little orange come in with it. So I'm going to take a little bit of orange. And I'm going to add quite a bit of water. And if I get some yellow, that's even better. So then we have lots of colors. And this one, you know, if I put the dot, this one will be the one that, if you have your four dots, this will be the one that comes out like a big teardrop. And then, or a, a triangle, you can think of it that way. This is very intense, but I'm going to use some water to make it not be so intense. I'll make those a little bigger. And you see I'm just kind of making this wash around it. And then the last triangle. Now I'm going to take a little water on my brush and I'm going to kind of make, I'm going to make these edges bumpy so that it's not so plain. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to one, two, three. 
And I'll pull my stroke so if it's light and dark, you'll see that going towards the center of the flower. This looks like a kind of like a poppy to me now, a California poppy. But I just kind of wanted to make it be a little bit ridged here. And if I keep adding a, just a tiny bit of water, I think it'll make it streaky. And I like the streaky look. I'm not getting any more paint though. And you can see how it's a really pale orange. And that, that's, I think that's what made me think it looked more like a poppy that way. If you ever look down on a poppy, they do, they do kind of look like this. So I guess they have to connect, but I don't know what kind of a center I might want to have there. And I can see my pencil through, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll come back and do something in the center, maybe more of that brown. Let's see, maybe I can do it now. I don't know what will happen. If I touch the brown right now, I think it'll be okay. And another thing that might be fun in it is um, green. So that gives it a little definition if you can see that. So now we just have to fill in. Um, because I've gone to an hour and we want to keep these lessons at about an hour, I'm just going to paint pretty fast and um, you can just see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to start painting. It's so much fun to do this and it's so easy to get carried away and then run out of time. But that's, especially in times like these, it's nice to have something to go to and just be calm for a while. I hope everyone's doing okay out there. I know that it's, uh, it's really hard. I mean, there's fun things about staying home, being with your family and everything, but there's other, other things that make it really hard and scary. And so I hope that everybody's doing okay. And um, everybody's safe and healthy and all of that. I look forward to being able to come back and be at the library. I'm just trying to, because I have this pink down here, I want to pull it up to the top and see, let's make a, a little bit darker around here and just see what happens if that bleeds out and makes a, a darker center. Whereas this one is too dark, with a little water it might go away and make a center. And then, so I'm just trying to pull that color up. Maybe I'll put some a darker orange. Maybe I'll make that little uh, tulip shaped flower because I can do that, uh, but I'll make them little. So I'll have them like this. And then maybe another one. And I'm going to put some pink in it because I think pink would tone down that red just a little bit. And that would be a nice spot for one. So I'm getting a little bit more red 
but I'm going to actually put a little pink in it. So I'm going to do some more of these because I have the space and I think it would look nice here. And I'll add a little bit more pink because I have a lot of it over here. Even a little purple would be kind of fun. Just gives it a little bit of dimension there. And I'll put one more up here because remember, we, we try not to just have two, so I'll put another one up here. And I didn't take more paint because now it's pale. I think I'll do that. Oops, so I don't know if you saw what just happened, but now we have a flower up here, <laughs> which we weren't gonna have there. But I got a drop of water, so now we have a flower. And that's right, I didn't, I forgot about the one that the little purpley one with the long strands. So that's a good filler. We could do that just, oh, sorry, I'm off. And I think maybe we don't have any blue in this. So I'm going to get one of the blue colors. It doesn't matter which one. I picked this kind of turquoise and I'm going to go over it. So now actually it's a blue flower instead. And I'm hurrying now because we're at the end of our time. But as you can see, just have fun with it. Do what makes you happy. Experiment. That is way too blue, but when it dries a little bit, I will go over it. But I think I need that color up here now. And maybe I'll put one up here because that'll look pretty cool with the orange too. I'll make it look like it's kind of behind it. That's a wild color for sure. But, and then, so look what happened there. Oh, look what happened there. Now we have another one here. <laughs> that's how, that's how it goes. <laughs> so, there is a way to fix that if we catch it quick enough. I don't have a paper towel, so I can't necessarily do it, but we can use water. And if I had a, uh, I don't have a paper towel, I have a hand. Excuse my hand. Let's just see what my hand will, or my fingers will blot up. It probably will show, but you could do a little wash behind all of this, and then it'll look intentional. And because this is too bright, let's see. I have a darker blue, maybe this will work. Not quite so brilliant. And I can also really change the color um, by maybe adding a, a dark purple or um, even red would give it a more of a, a different kind of purple color. But that is pretty intense, so that's pretty bright. So I probably will need to work on this at home. But remember, it might look like an accident now, but we're going to make it a happy accident and opportunity for something new later. And uh, I guess another quick couple of stems and we're done. So maybe some, we always want to do the little bottom. And we'll put a stem. Another stem can go here and here. This definitely needed something here. Even if we aren't doing the whole stem, we're just kind of showing where it is. Maybe, maybe some little leaves coming out for this flower. And another thing that would be kind of fun is to just do like little sprays or maybe, well this one you should have some green. And it's so pale that it it's just going to be, you know, in the background and uh, we're just suggesting things. Maybe we have some little curly cues coming off with some little leaves on them. Any place where you see that it might just need a little bit of extra, you can just go ahead and add that. 
This could have this could have flowers in it later. Maybe some green under there. Maybe maybe it has a, a leaf coming out here. So I guess it's time to say goodbye. I guess that um, there isn't time to do more, but you have plenty of time, so feel free to add whatever you like when you ha with your painting. And I hope that you've had fun. Um, maybe I'll turn myself back on so you can see. So here we have, it's still, again, just It's just a sketch, it's just starting to take shape, and we have to go, but I hope that, that you have had fun, and I don't know if this looks good or not. I feel like it needs more, and I don't have time to do it, so I hope that you have fun with yours, and that you come back and, and finish it, and I'm sure that the library would love to see anything that you've painted. And if you wanted to um, send copies of things that you might have created based on this lesson, that would be a lot of fun to see. We'd, we'd all think that that was pretty cool. And so keep that in mind. Think of us. And I'll see you around for the next round of classes. And check out the drawing lesson, too, if you have a chance that would be fun. I would love to see what you come up with with all of this. That would be really fun. And I guess I have to say goodbye. So it's hard to stop because it's just fun. I'm just getting started. So but we are now 12 minutes over the hour so I hope that you've enjoyed yourself and maybe you've painted with your children maybe you've done it by yourself as an experiment just to see what you can do but um, I hope that you continue and try and experiment and have fun with it because that's what art is really all about and it's really a mirror of our lives where sometimes things happen that are out of control and we just have to go with it and make the best of it. So take care. See you soon. Once again, I'm Tina. I teach here at Los Gatos Library, and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon, and stay safe. Bye-bye.